Welcome to the Reverberations Podcast, where we explore the human experience and the journey of self-discovery. Thank you for tuning into this episode. This episode is one where we dial into commitment, of where we dial in to our purpose, of where we dial into our personal power. Are we ready to commit to ourselves? Are we ready to empower ourselves? Recognize our purpose, channel the power of infinite intelligence, and embody our passion. We talk about developing new habits to be able to support us on our journey of self discovery and being accountable and responsible for ourselves to break free from the chains, to be liberated mentally, stronger physically, emotionally intelligent, and spiritually aligned. I trust you're going to enjoy this episode. Please feel free to leave any comments. And if this type of content inspires you, moves you, I invite you to subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive more content like this. Thank you so much. Have yourself an incredible day and enjoy this podcast. What's good, everyone? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Reverberations. In our last episode, we dialed into personal responsibility and accountability and recognizing that our road to all that we desire begins within. The journey of self-discovery is the most intimate love story of where we really get to know ourself, our whole self, within and throughout. And once we tap into our own creative potential, we enter the world of possible, whether it's releasing extra weight that we've been holding on to, or creating that piece of artwork, or traveling to a particular destination or exiting or entering a relationship or letting go of a job to pursue what we know to be true within a passion, a purpose and to plan whatever it is. The invitation there is to leap. And we have the ability to set the course for the most magnanimous transformation throughout the course of humanity. It is so ripe for it. It is so right here. We as a collective are longing for that connection, for that embrace. To be respected, to be honored, to be appreciated, to be valued, to be seen, to be heard. to be felt, to be recognized. It may seem like a long list, though it truly isn't. With the best of intentions, we end up sacrificing our ideals for an imposed reality. We accept these extremes as the norm. And we enter into this repetitive motion where we allow ourselves to be pulled off of center. We're no longer in harmony. We're no longer at our optimal frequency. So how do we return to the center? How do we regain our sense of self? How do we bring the adventure back? How do we revitalize our spirit? If we detach from the outcome and are not bound by the results, we can optimize our potential. So how can we detach from the outcome, yet still be the outcome? To be free and unbound, we must believe it, be it, and leave it. Let all of what we know to be true be. And all of our inhibitions and doubts and fear leave. Everything is as it's intended to be. Dreams come true every day. Every day, something we once thought was impossible becomes a reality. What is it that we dream of as a collective consciousness together? What is it that you dream of? Are our individual dreams in alignment with those of the collective consciousness? Are they in sync? Are they in alignment? Do they support each other? What holds us back from achieving our individual dreams? 
What about the global vision of peace, love, and greater good? Is it circumstance? Is it an outside force? Is it religion, racial tension, sexism, government? Ultimately, the responsibility and accountability rests within us, each of us, because we are the ones that create the world that's in front of us. There's little doubt that whatever it is that we are able to conceive, we can achieve. On a personal level, it's a matter of connecting with the truth that's within ourself so that we can rise to a higher level of understanding and break free from the idle state of stagnation that we choose to remain in. What we see in the physical world is a reflection of what we believe and what we have created collectively. The question that comes forward is, what do I believe in? With the best of intentions, we end up sacrificing our ideals for an imposed reality. For if my beliefs aren't in alignment with my actions, then I'm out of sync with the rhythm of life. And that's where stress, strain, disease, illness all find their way into our life. And once we become aware of this, the choice becomes ours. And this is where our world opens up of where the light begins to shine on areas of our life that brighten our day, that illuminate our soul from within. And we radiate that throughout. That's powerful. There's so much potential for greatness within each and every single one of us. And we all know that at the core of our being. Why do we choose to not believe in ourselves or to trust ourselves? Or more importantly, why don't we go after, after what it is that we truly desire? When we leap into something wholeheartedly, with a casual confidence, in the same support for ourself that we would offer an infant learning how to walk. Imagine, see, feel, share, and celebrate it with anyone and everyone who cares to listen or doesn't. There is no time for judgment, self-judgment, self-sabotage. And of course there are areas that have opportunities for growth, but not to hold ourselves back. We're here to embrace the desired outcome so that it enlightens every single cell as it resonates through our body. And we embody that frequency of what we desire within and radiate this energy throughout. For when we lead, synchronicity has a wonderful way of weaving its wonder. Things begin to show up seemingly out of nowhere. Chance encounters. Random phone calls, magic, appears around every corner. And all this sounds great. Though for most of us, we experience this little thing called fear. Anytime that we act on our beliefs, we confront fear. And the leap reveals a greater awareness of our energetic triggers. All our shit comes up, and then the loop. Once we're aware of our shit, we don't want to face our shit, so we go back into our hypnotic patterns that keep us entranced on the hamster wheel of life. Though in any moment, we have a choice, and each choice holds an energetic potential which manifests itself as a particular outcome. How we choose to engage being consciously aware of our choices can have a direct impact on our outcome. Where we direct our energy, our thoughts, is integral to what shows up in our daily experience. Our potential is infinite. And without getting too deep into the meta, quantum, and general physics and mechanics, let's assume that there is no limit to what we can create. Again, our potential is infinite. 
The most potent arrow in our quiver is our freedom, our personal right and liberty to choose. Our choice is integral to what shows up in our daily experience. Every choice is on purpose. With this freedom and greater awareness comes a deeper responsibility and accountability. Not only for ourselves, for all in creation, the seen and the unseen, within and throughout, infinite and eternal. And through a series of choices that are in alignment with our desired outcome and what we know to be true, as well as being consciously aware that we're not harming anyone intentionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, or emotionally, we establish a pattern which, if honored and followed through with, creates a habit. Thus, transformation materializes through habituation, though fear. Our freedom has been clouded in fear and impaired with judgment. Ignoring or pretending that fear doesn't exist or potentially more damaging, not addressing it when it comes up only stores the emotional energy in our body which has the potential to manifest distress or disease, as we said before. The fight-flight-freeze response is more of a reaction than it is a response. A reaction is the reciprocation of the force exerted via the initial energy set in motion. A response comes from a space of responsibility. Thus, an informed, responsible reply carries a frequency that's in alignment with what you wish to manifest in physical form. The challenge is, is that we need to build this skill set as a resource in our daily practice, integrating our vision into our daily life. And many choose not to make this leap due to a lack of trust and lifelong programming that supports the debilitating thought that we're not good enough. That was then. This is now. We are here now. We are here to overcome fear through the gradual release of what no longer serves us. Let's emphasize the importance of each word. We are here now. We. It's a we thing. The days of the lone wolf are over. It's necessary to support one another. We need to regain trust in others. Though it starts with trusting ourselves. This trust comes from making choices that are in alignment with our personal truth and do not harm anyone intentionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, or emotionally. It all begins within. R. It's the act of being. Be you. Be the you that you know to be true. Holding back on who you are only further embeds the depression of fear. Allow others to express their truth without judgment. And learn discernment. Here. Wherever you go, there you are. Here is actually everywhere. That said, what we do here has the potential to influence the whole. Being actively involved in participating in our day-to-day -day routine is where we put into practice who we are within our community and environment. Right here. Right here. Being with what's in front of us. Now. Why wait? Putting off what we know to be true and what brings joy and peace is a disservice not only to ourself, but in all of creation. It reinforces fear's control and creates a disconnect between who we think we are and what our words and actions suggest is truth. Adding to fear's influence, it amplifies a signal that we really don't want what we want. Have you ever had an opportunity to take an action towards a desired outcome and didn't? And do it now. Why not? Are we worth it? Am I worth it? Am I worth being the best version of myself? And being the living evidence? Being the example? Being the embodiment of what I know to be true? Am I worth experiencing that? Are we all? worth experiencing that. There is a risk when we dial into ourself and recognize our power, our potential, our truth, our passion, our purpose, our divine design, our calling, 
our true north, our dharmic path, our gift, our talents. It requires us to show up. And the one thing that I know more than anything else is that it is so worth it. That when we allow ourselves to surrender to that power, we release our limitations. We get out of our own way. And we trust the process. And that risk translates to the greatest reward. And yes, we do deserve that. And yes, we can create that. And yes, we are creating that. And yes, it is showing up. And yes, it is better together. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Reverberations. As always, it truly is an honor to share this time and space with each and every single one of you from wherever you're tuning in from across the globe. If there's anything that inspired you, that moved you, that touched you, please feel free to pass this on. This is all about the journey of self-discovery and sharing and spreading the love and how we can create a more sustainable and harmonious coexistence for all in creation. It's a we thing. And we are better together. Have an amazing day. Seeking beyond. Trying to find the way out of the dark into the light. Yes.